Hello, this is David Benign from Excel Consulting and in this video I'm going to show you how to find the highest date given a criteria. So what do I mean by that? Over here, let's pretend I've done a survey. So batch 1 had two surveys, one in Jan 16, one in December 17. And I'm saying that I only want to take the most recent one because the previous one is superseded completely by that. Uh, for batch number two, I've got six, and I only want to take the most recent one, so that's this one, and so the last date always needs to show me that one, etc., etc. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this in Excel, and then show it to you in Power BI as well. So let me first copy and paste these values, and I'm going to give them the general format. Um, the most important thing to know is that numbers, or dates are just numbers that look differently. Excel stores them as numbers and treats them as numbers, but I can go here and change them to a date like that. And the reason why that's important is because we're going to, in Excel and Power BI, use the max function. The max function gives you the highest number in a range, and in this we're going to use that as well. Equals max ifs. In this one. Max ifs is only in a built-in calculation in Excel 2019 or Office 365 um, or Google Sheets. So go to equals max ifs, max range. So which is the range of values where we're looking for the, the highest number or the last date, which is this one. Select it, press F4 to lock it in, get the dollar signs, comma, criteria range which is the column where we're looking for the data. Select there, F4, comma, criteria, current row there, close our brackets. And then we get that answer as well, and we can drag it down, and we get the same answers there. Um, quick little thing, how did I get this color coding? It's actually super easy. Select them, go to conditional formatting, color scales, and then choose one that you like, like that. There we go. Um, conditional formatting is one of Excel's most amazing bar under use features, and that is just one of the things it can do. Now let's analyze this in a bit more detail. It's saying in this cell, uh, it's referring to two entire columns, which is this one and this one, and one cell. The difference with Excel and Power BI is that every cell can have its own reference, every cell has its own formula. In Power BI you can't refer to a cell in itself, you can only refer to a column. So that's where it gets a bit tricky and a bit differently. But we are going to write essentially the same formula, just in Power BI language and bearing in mind that issue. So let me go over into Power BI, here we go, so the same data in both columns. Um, we're going to go to new column, and we're going to call this last day of survey equals calculate. Calculate is basically um, a superpowered sum if or max if. And then we have the expression. In this case, we can make that expression the max of the date. There's a column for date, comma, move into the, the second input, and this is confusing, but the input is called filter1, <laughs> and the first thing I'm going to do is type in filter. So this is the filter function, which is uh, used for more complex parameters around calculate. The, so far it's telling me, give me the highest number of in the date column, or the last date in the date column, where the next filter is going to happen. So I need a table, so that table is going to be batch. Your filter function always starts with the table as the first input, and the next one is the filter expression. And here I'm going to do a lot like what I had before. So I'm going to say what the column I'm looking for is, 
and that is going to be the batch column. That one there. And I'm going to say that that needs to be equal to the batch in the current row. How do I refer to the batch in the current row? The way to do it here is earlier, so earlier is the function name, the column name, and the column name is going to be again batch. That one there. Leave the second input blank, close my brackets there, close my brackets there, close my brackets, for calculate. Enter. And I get that one. Um, let me just change this to date. That's not too many characters. And by the way, whenever you create a new function in Power BI, it is always good practice to uh, create uh, an explanation for what it is. The way you can do that in the current method is you have to go to the reporting view, click on view, choose field properties, click on this, and then give it the name. This is what it means. Really useful because what that means is that when people are looking at it, as they hover over it, they get the pop-out saying what it is. So whenever you've got a calculated column or a measure, you should always do that, in my opinion. Um, all right, so back to what this represents. So max is just the last of the dates, kind of like why I used max if in Excel. Calculate is converting it from max into a max ifs, basically. And then this is just telling Excel that when it comes to calculate, you're going to do a more advanced parameter or filtering. And then this is the name of the column. Then you're saying that the column batch must be equal to the current row for batch. So in this case, it's going to test. Um, look up the whole column for number two and give me two because I'm in the current row. In this cell over here, it's saying, given that I'm in the row where batch is six, look in the whole column and look only in number six and then look across here. And once you're restricted to only six, find me the highest number or the last date in that regard. So that's kind of how it works. Um, the technical side is pretty advanced. It's about context transition, which is one of the most advanced and confusing parts of the DAX language. But it's saying that earlier means that it's transitioning to an earlier transition, an, an earlier context transition, an earlier parameter, things like that. Um, the earlier function does have a second input called number. Um, and if you leave it blank, then it goes to the previous state. And if you press 2, it goes to the, uh, the state 2 before, etc., etc. As I said, it's pretty complicated, so you don't need to know it. But this function does work for that. And there's lots of great reading materials on the earlier function if you want to know more about that. Great. Thanks for watching.